let us draw the simple position of a pentagonal prism. So here the base edge is perpendicular to VP or else we can see or we can say rectangular face is perpendicular to VP. Both these conditions are one and the same. So if one of the base edges is perpendicular to VP, that edge is to be drawn perpendicular to the XY line in the top view. So we shall start it from the top view because the pentagonal prism is resting on SP. So when the prism is resting on SP, obviously its base shape, which is a pentagon, will be clearly visible in the top view. So we shall start it from the top view with a base edge, which is perpendicular to VP. So here I am starting it from the right hand side. So we shall assume that the base edge length is 30 mm. So we shall start with 30 mm edge length. I am marking the center of this 30 mm as 15 mm. And the next step is drawing a perpendicular bisector to this line. Again, it is a thin line. Next step is from any one of the ends of this line, we shall take an angle of 54. So what is 54? 54 is the half included angle of a pentagon. The included angle of a pentagon is 108 mm and the half of it is 54. another thin line so this thin line and this perpendicular bisector it is meeting at a point here so we mark this point and now using your compass by taking this point as a center and this much distance as radius let us draw a small thin circle circle now with the again using the same compass let us take the base edge length which is 30 now we shall cut an arc to the this side and one more arc to the right side so we are having two intersecting points here the arc and the circle is intersecting here also the arc and circle is intersecting we shall mark these points now using our roller scale let us join these two points now here we are having an intersection of the perpendicular bisector and this circle we have got a point here now let us join this point to this previously drawn line and to this side also so this forms the base shape of a pentagonal prism so here it won't be having slanting edges because it is not a pyramid, it is a prism. Now we shall name it starting from this point. So here, as it is a pentagonal prism, totally it will be having 10 corners. 5 corners along the base and 5 corners on the top face. Base and top face, in this case, both are pentagons. So out of which we can see only the top face, only the top pentagon will be visible. So the five corners which are on the top so here we are having five corners let us assume that this is the top surface so only those corners will be visible so starting from a b c d and e so these are the corners on the top face you know we shall name the base which is presently invisible in the top view so all the corners on the base also will be invisible. So let us name it as A1, B1, C1, 
d1 and d1 so all these base corners are invisible here a a1 is actually a lateral edge likewise we are having five lateral edges b b1 c c1 d d1 and e e1 all these lateral edges are visible as a single point in the front view sorry in the top view because it is perpendicular to the base so this is the center point of the corresponding prism now we shall draw the front view by extending projectors First we shall draw the axis of the front view. So here this is the center of the corresponding prism. Let us assume that it is having a height of 70 m. So axis is to be drawn as a chain line, chain thin line. Now let us extend this lateral edge which is A A1. The height of the same will be 70 m. Again, let us ex extend the rightmost extreme point at a height of 70 mm. So this is the top face. And this is the bottom face. So this forms the outline of the front view which is a rectangle and outline of the top view is a pentagon. Now, let us name it. We shall extend a projector from this point also. So, along the top face, we are having A, B, C, D, E. So, all this is the top face in the front view, which is having A, B, C, D, E. And this is the bottom face in the front view, which is having A1, B1, C1, D1 and E1. So, let us mark it. So this is A dash, this is B, so this is B dash, this point is C dash, likewise we are having D dash also, so this is D dash, again E dash. So these are the points on the top face, now let us name the bottom face also which is a1 b1 c1 d1 and e1 so along the bottom face a1 b2 and c1 d1 and e1 let us discuss which are all the invisible points in the front view with the help of this top view. So on the extreme left of this top view we are having A and on the extreme right we are having D, D1 and C, C1. We shall take this point which is away from the X, Y line and let us assume a straight line connecting A and D. So between this assumed line and between this X, Y line we have got points C, C1 and B, B1. So these four points, they may be invisible in the front view. So let us take it one by one. So this is C and C1. So C and C1, they will be invisible in the front view. So let us write it in brackets. Why they are invisible? Because they are on the rear side so if you are observing in this particular direction 
dd1 is on the front side and cc1 is on the rear side so that is why c1 and c, c and c1 are invisible in the front view here also bb1 they are on the rear side when you are observing in this particular direction so b dash and b1 dash will be also invisible now let us draw the lateral edges in the front view so already we are having a a1 here so next is b b1 but b b1 b1 uh, b dash and b1 dash are invisible so the lateral edge connecting b dash and b1 dash also will be invisible so we had to represent it using a dash thick line but along the same line we are having one more lateral edge which is e dash e1 dash so here as visible and invisible are coinciding we have to represent only the visible lateral edge which is e dash e1 dash now we are having c dash c1 dash as invisible lateral edge but along the same line we are having d dash d1 dash so we have to we had to represent d dash d1 dash that is why we have already drawn a thick line here so this forms the front view and this forms the top view in this particular symbol position here the base edge is perpendicular to vp so which base edge is perpendicular to vp here so here we are having a base edge c1 d1 so this particular base edge is perpendicular to vp so perpendicular to vp means this base edge c1 d1 will be perpendicular to the xy line in the top view and here it is also mentioned that the rectangular face is perpendicular to vp so which rectangular face is perpendicular to vp so here we are having a rectangular face which is c c1 d d1 okay so here in the front view it seems to be a line which is again c dash d dash c1 dash d1 dash so this is actually a rectangular face which is not visible in the front view as a rectangle or it is neither visible in the top view as a rectangle but instead of that they are uh, it is visible as a straight line so if this prism is tilted to the right hand side it will be resting on base edge c1 d1 so this is c1 d1 so in the front view this is c1 d1 so it will be resting on base edge c1 d1 if it is tilted to the right hand side the lateral face or the rectangular face c c1 d1 d will have inclination with sp so which is this rectangular face c c1 d1 d so this is that particular rectangular face which is a line in the front view and this is that particular rectangular face in the top view which is again represented as a line so below this line we are having this rectangular face c c1 d d1 and when you are observing in the front also you can you cannot see this as a rectangle but you can see it only as a line because this rectangular face is perpendicular to vp now if it is tilted to the left hand side it will be resting on a base corner a1 so this is base corner a1 so if it is tilted to the left hand side it will be resting on a1 a1 and if it is tilted to the left hand side again lateral edge a a1 will have inclination with respect to sp so this is lateral edge a a1 so this is lateral edge a a1 in the top view which is uh, represented as a point because this lateral edge is perpendicular to sp that is why in the top view you can see it as a point again if it is either tilted to the left hand side or right hand side in both the cases axis will have an inclination with respect to sp